In our discussion of descriptive statistics, I showed you how we can display our data in one of two ways, with numbers or with pictures, which we call graphs. When we look at a scatter plot, we see a depiction of the strength and direction of the relationship between our variables. However, to display our data as numbers, we want to create a correlation coefficient. Here's a quick history lesson. The correlational coefficient, which we will abbreviate as R sub xy, indicating the correlation between variables x and y, was created by Sir Francis Galton, who, like Wile E. Coyote, was a genius. Sir Francis Galton invented this regression line and R to represent correlation. Remember that R stands for regression. A very common mistake that people make is to think that R stands for relationship. It does not. R means regression. Sir Francis Galton may have invented correlation, but it was perfected by Carl Pearson, who worked out the mathematics of using a correlational coefficient to show how closely the data fit to a straight line. What is a correlational coefficient? A correlational coefficient will mathematically depict the strength and direction of a relationship between variables. Let's take a look at what a correlational coefficient looks like. This is an example of a correlational coefficient. We see that it is represented by the letter R. R sub xy means that this is a correlation between variables x and y. And R stands for regression, not relationship. Next, we notice that there is a sign, either positive or negative, attached to our correlational coefficient. The sign indicates the direction of a linear relationship. If the sign is positive, the relationship is positive. If the sign is negative, the relationship is negative. We also see a number, and when we consider only the absolute value of that number, it is telling us the strength of the relationship. That number will vary between 0 and 1 in its absolute value, with numbers closer to 1 indicating stronger relationships and numbers closer to 0 indicating weaker relationships. And remember, this is absolute value, so a correlation of positive 1 is exactly as strong as a correlation of negative 1. A 0.8 positive correlation is actually less strong than a negative 0.9 correlation. The degree to which it is closer to either positive one or negative one tells us the strength of the relationship. The direction of the relationship, however, is indicated by the slope of the regression line. When the relationships are positive, which we could also describe as having a direct relationship between the variables, both variables move in the same direction. We saw this in our example of working at a concession stand selling cold soda. As one variable increased, temperature, the other variable increased, sales of cold soda. And as the one variable decreased, it got colder, the second variable also decreased. We sold less cold soda. Another example might be that among children, as you grow taller, you weigh more. This is a positive relationship between these two variables. You recall I said there are three types of relationships, positive, negative, and none. A negative relationship, or inverse relationship, occurs when the variables move in opposite directions. As one variable increases, the other variable decreases. As temperature goes up, the sales of hot chocolate decrease. As temperature goes down, the sales of hot chocolate increase. Or, as you study more, you make fewer mistakes in your homework. This is a negative relationship between variables. We can also consider the strength of the relationship. As I've told you, correlation ranges between 1 and negative 1, with values closer to either extreme being stronger. The strength of the correlation is the extent to which any given x value is paired with one and only one y value. 
in a perfect correlation, every X value would be paired with only one Y value, and all of the data points would line up directly on the regression line. Most correlations, however, are not perfect. Therefore, we can examine the strength of the correlation, noting that correlations close to zero are weak. But as those correlations approach either positive one or negative one, those relationships grow stronger. We can also see the strength of the relationship depicted in our scatter plot. When the correlation is strong, the R value is close to either positive one or negative one, and the points are very close to the regression line. This means the variability in our data is low, and the relationship between the variables is strong. On the other hand, as the correlation becomes weaker, we see that the dots move off of the line. The variability is increasing, and this means the relationship is weaker. If the relationship becomes so weak that there is no relationship, then our scatter plot looks elliptical, cloud-shaped, round. It's indicating that there is no relationship between the variables. The only way that we could draw a regression line when there is no relationship between the variables is to simply make that regression line horizontal. And what that means is that if we were using our correlation for some form of prediction, the only value that we could predict for any given x value is the mean of the y values. Let's put all of these pieces together and learn how we can interpret a correlation. This is the eyeball method. In other words, you just look at the correlation and make a determination of how strong or weak that it is. Correlations of zero have no relationship. Between 0.1 and 0.24, we would say the relationship is weak. From 0.25 to 0.49, we would say the relationship is moderate. From 0.5 to 0.74, the relationship is large. And from 0.75 to 0.99, the relationship is very large. In the occurrence of a positive or negative one correlation, we have a perfect relationship or perfect correlation. And quite honestly, perfect correlations are boring. A perfect correlation exists between day and night. If the sun is up right now, then 12 hours from now it's going to be nighttime. And because that happens every day, there's really no use for prediction. We simply know how the world works. All the really interesting correlations exist between zero and one. And the correlation doesn't have to be a 0.8 or 0.9 to be useful. Sometimes correlations in the 0.2 and 0.3 range can be very useful and tell us quite a bit about the relationship between the variables. A final point to make about all of these correlational coefficients is that we can square these correlational coefficients to determine a measure of effect size.